Good evening to the 22812 and welcome to the BC Voice Midweek Radio Show. We have all your weekly news, sports, and entertainment updates right here. My name is Brandon Wells, the co-station manager here at BC Voice, and I will be your host today to help guide you along today's journey. Sit back, relax, and hear the many voices of Bridgewater College here tonight. As always, we have four 15-minute segments over the next hour. Starting us off tonight with local and national news headliners are Chaylin Grant and Joe Karen, with topics including local speed limit changes, the continued war between the government and Juul, and the latest on the coronavirus. What's up, Bridgewater? I'm Joe. I'm Che. And we're going to cover all the important news for you guys, uh, starting off some local news. Uh, which, what do we got, Jalen? All right. So Joe Simmons, the chief of uh, Bridgewater Police, said the department has been trying to work on a specific issue, and they've been trying to get the council to approve of this. So according to the guidelines of the Virginia Code, it's illegal for golf carts to drive on the road if the speed limit is above 20 miles per hour. Okay. So they're going to change the speed limit into some areas from twenty five from 30 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour to make it easier to ride around on golf carts in town and okay. have access to parks on the North River Road, Green Street, Oakwood Drive, and some of Dinkle Avenue and Mount Crawford Avenue um, will be changing their speed limits according to Simmons. And I don't know if you guys already know this, but they already changed the main road in Bridgewater from the speed limit being 30 to 25. So that's the main road, the one going through campus? Um, So the one that's going like in downtown Bridgewater. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So that means that traffic's going to slow down a lot. And I remember last year, a lot of people were pretty upset with the speed limit change. And I just think it's funny because I've seen more like horses and buggies than golf carts here <laughs> and they can go on roads that are 45 miles per hour okay well I, i'm just curious as to why they made this law change like are, do a lot of people drive golf carts around here not or... in the time that i've been here i literally have never seen someone with a golf cart yeah uh i mean it's just interesting that they made like that like it's it's so specific it seems like it's, they're thinking like, hey, we really want to enable people to drive their golf carts around Bridgewater. Like, that's with such that a weird change. initiative. Yeah. That's such a weird desire. Like, we really want this to happen. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of other changes that could be made, I guess. But golf carts specifically, I just think is odd. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think it would be more relevant to make a law around the horse and buggies. Because, I mean, <laughs> I see those like twice a day. Yeah, there does not go a time when I don't see them. Okay. <laughs> uh, so moving on. Uh, national news. Uh, what's going on there? Yes. So national news. Um, Catherine Johnson, um, one of NASA's hidden figures, um, died at 101. Um, the NASA administrator, Jim Bridenstine, confirmed her death Monday morning. And if you guys don't know, or if you don't remember the movie Hidden Figures, um, Johnson helped name the calculations to help sink Project Apollo Lunar. Um, lander and that was one of her greatest contributions to space exploration shows she basically calculated the codes to get us to the moon okay and they they uh I, I haven't seen the movie but i mean if i'm right didn't they have to do that in like a kind of uh like a really heated environment like wasn't weren't things ha yeah. happening fast yeah so i haven't seen the movie but i know about the time at the time it was there was still a lot of racism going on and i think this was around the time of the civil rights movement so a lot of what they were doing was behind the scenes and they weren't given credit okay. for their contributions to landing us on the moon okay yeah so this is a really big important i guess this would be considered an important event according to nasa because this was literally one of the major first accomplishments that we made in terms of space exploration yeah. uh so i mean yeah huge contributor to nasa and our space exploration uh rest in peace katherine johnson and then the next thing in national news um Contributing to the Jewel controversy, Wisconsin has joined a bipartisan 39-state investigation of Jewel Labs marketing and sales practice, the alleged targeting of youths, nicotine content claims, 
and the company's statements about risks, safety, safety, and effectiveness as their devices as a method of cessation. Okay. The Wisconsin Attorney General, Josh Kuhl, um, expressed their dramatic increase in e-cigarette consumption and nationally has announced to the probe, accompanied by attorney generals from Connecticut, Florida, Nevada, Oregon, and Texas. Um, vaping has been blamed for the outbreak of severe lung illnesses, and they've actually categorized lung injuries associated with e-cigarettes or vaping products as e-valley, so E-V-A-L-I, and more than 2,800 okay. nationwide cases have broke out, and there have even been 68 deaths. Okay. Uh, well, geez, that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, so, like, is this something that's kind of gradually happened with uh, them becoming suspicious about e-cigs or... I mean, I know, like, in the past, like, yeah. as they've become more popular, like, skepticism about how healthy they are has mm -hmm. also risen. Uh, but, like, do you know, like, is this really the first state? Uh, oh, no, it says 30. All right, so 39 state investigations. Yeah, so okay. there have been 39 states before them. I mean, would it be considered 40 states now or 39 states with their inclusion? But either way, they're not the first ones to find this to be skeptical, I guess. This could have to do with more recent investigation yeah. as the attorney generals have kept on about this case and this lawsuit over time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's kind of a big deal and I could understand why that would be concerning. I mean, they just raised the, raised the age to purchase nicotine to 21 and also with this... Um, Is it in Wisconsin? In like n federally. Nationally? Okay. Yeah, federally. Um, so also what's important about this is jewels have been marketed to stop nicotine use, okay. like traditional nicotine use, such as cigarettes. However, that's been proven false because people who haven't even started, you know, smoking cigarettes or other traditional forms of nicotine have shifted to jeweling and that's, um, perpetuated an addiction. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought, I, uh, I thought jewels were actually less potent than cigarettes. Mm -mm. That's not yeah, the case. content in a pod is as much as, um, like, almost a pack of cigarettes. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, I'm glad I know that now. Yeah. Um, going over to what's going on all over the world. So, coronavirus, um, it's like, if you if you go on the internet and you, and you look up news, it's like the first five stories is going to be coronavirus, yeah. coronavirus, coronavirus. It's a, it's a big deal. Um, it's not just a common flu. Um, it's kind of reaching the level that, uh, you know, Ebola was at and like swine flu was at. So as of now, there's 77,658 confirmed cases in China. So that's just in China. And, uh, China's death count is at 2,663. Um, outside of that, uh, there was a cruise ship called the diamond princesses di they called the diamond princess at least 542 people aboard this ship tested oh positive for the coronavirus um yeah i they might want to get a refund uh, for that cruise oh my gosh um and i mean out and even outside of china um it like places like italy there's at least 150 cases um and a couple deaths um so, I'm not really sure what point we, they have to get to to pronounce it as a pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, but we're definitely reaching, get, coming closer and closer to that point. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, it's like prepare, be safe. If you're going to travel, make sure you know where you're going. Yes. Check what's going on in the place you're traveling to. And as always, wash your hands. <laughs> Take your, your basics. Take, yeah, take your vitamins. All right, eat your eat your vegetables. It's funny because people are starting to get masks for um to prevent themselves from getting the coronavirus. But the thing is, is the only way you'll be protected um with a mask if it has a respirator. Okay. And there's only one company called 3M that sells them, but they don't sell to individuals. They sell in bulk. Wow, and I I mean I yeah. bet. I bet they're kind of raising the prices on those just yeah. to take, uh, capitalize on that high demand. So, like, does the respirator, like, filter the bacteria or something? Yeah, so basically, you could imagine it as, like, two blocks on the sides of the mask, okay. and they have filters within them to filter out, I guess, like, pollute, things from, like, pollutants, um, airborne virus, bacteria, yeah. whatever you can imagine is a pollutant or 
I guess, contaminating the air. It'll okay. filter it out. But normal masks don't do that. Okay. Normal mask really doesn't do much at all. Well, I mean, it's like cloth. I mean, I'm sure it protects it. <laughs> protects you from inhaling a lot of bacteria but it probably doesn't do nearly as good as a job as something like that mask would do no it's not gonna stop the coronavirus you said you, you said you said 3m yeah okay um so yeah well, i mean that's something to look into definitely uh also international news uh the u.s officials announced a um on friday that they're making a deal with the taliban to reduce violence for seven days that deal started at midnight on friday uh i'm not entirely sure what it seems very vague yeah Re- reduce violence um so i'm not really sure like what would be violating that act mm-hmm. um but i mean this is good news nonetheless um just the fact that uh this enemy the taliban that we've been engaged with for so long we're able to sit down and 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 come to terms on something with them. Yes. Uh, it's definitely good news. Uh, Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, announced that the deal isn't perfect, but so far is working. Uh, so I guess in the past couple of days since Friday, mm-hmm. uh, there's been less violence, less chaos going on. And uh, he added um, that if and only if the that this that we get through this week without any violence. So if and only if this is it's successful Mm -hmm. then we'll meet the taliban and uh start looking at a uh kind of gradual deal to withdraw u.s forces and uh kind of commence afghan negotiations where all sides of the conflict will sit down together and begin begin the hard work of reconciliation so very uh like speculative at this point very tentative um but nonetheless it's good to hear um that you know, we're, well, maybe this conflict that's lasted for the last 20 or 30 years, maybe it's finally coming to an end. Maybe like, we'll see it like the end of the tunnel. One can hope. One can hope. Um, but we will, we will see about that. There's, uh, there's definitely more coming out of that. Uh, now, <laughs> for some, some, some good news. Yay! Yay. Uh, so researchers from... Cornell University have found a new species of uh, bacteria that's good at breaking down organic matter, including the cancer-causing chemicals that mm-hmm. are released when coal, when coal, gas, oil, and refuse are burned. So uh, what I'm seeing is basically this bacteria is good at uh, eating up, breaking down pollutants. Um, oh. So, uh, yeah. So, like, when coal and gas and oil and refuse are burned they you know they create fossil fuels so what i'm getting from this is uh they've found a bacteria that can break down uh these fossil fuels and kind of prevent them from being repolluted into the atmosphere um the bacteria is called madsen madseniana uh <laughs> after it's named after gene madsen who started the research on it in uh 2017 uh he passed away um, I believe a year ago before the research was completed, but anyways, thank you, Gene, for starting this research. Uh, it's very good to see that we're finding innovative solutions to deal with, you know, fossil fuels. Um, and it's like, you know, you don't hear about this stuff. No, no. Like, would you have heard about that? If uh, like, I, you gotta, you need to type in good news <laughs> on the internet to find stuff like that, but it's happening. Um, and you know, stuff like this is happening. Imagine and, bacteria being able to break down pollutants. Well, how do they even re- emit that into the air? What are they going to do? Like, that, like, like, how do they do that? I, that I could not um, figure out from just reading the article. Uh, it's, it, you know, it kind of just described it in very, like, simple terms so, like, regular people would understand it. So it didn't get too scientific oh, yeah, yeah, about yeah. all that. Um, but, yeah, I, I suppose, like... Uh, it'll break down fossil fuels before they turn into a gas or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm not a biologist. I'm not a major science person. I wouldn't like, know. Yeah, that's it's just over, right over my head. Uh, but yeah, anything else? Nope, that's it for me. And yeah, that's all we have in terms of news for you guys tonight, Bridgewater. Uh, thank you. Stay safe and good night. Have a good evening.
always nice to end on some good news. Hopefully the new research helps scientists discover more ways to help as many people as possible. Just a quick reminder, you are listening to the BC Voice Midweek Radio Show here on BC Voice. Special thanks to Joe Karen and Taylor and Grant with that amazing news segment. It's now time to switch gears as Dean Barker, Zach Rogers, and Christian Sherman are now prepared with the most up-to-date sporting news. Today, Bridgewater's baseball team can tr- Bridgewater's baseball team continues to roll through opponents while men's basketball continues to struggle under new head coach Stephen Enright. On the national side of things, more controversy out of the MLB, the NFL Combine, and the brand new XFL. Good evening. My name's Dean Barker. And I'm Zach. And welcome to BC Voice Sports Podcast Midweek. Unfortunately, uh, Christian Sherman couldn't be with us tonight. Yeah. So. It'll just be us two, but we're still going to get right into the news for sports. So, so yeah. So, right into it. Men's basketball had their playoff game last night at Hampton, Sydney. Unfortunately, the Eagles went home early again. That's, they, that's just a shame. Yeah, they had... Yeah. I mean, they barely scraped it into the Odex. Yeah, they they fought so hard. I mean, looking at the, some of the teams they were playing, they almost beat. They were only lost by fourteen to Randolph Macon, and yep. then they pulled out wins. They only lost by thirteen to Hampton Sydney. Yeah, I mean, they were they were picked to lose this game, but I mean, the they just got killed on. They got e- out rebounded fifty one to thirty two. You're not gonna yeah. beat anybody doing that. Yeah, Hampton Sydney's defense was insane. Like they did not allow any. Th- like the Eagles' offense to do anything, yeah. Um, and which is, but it overall it's a pretty good season. If you get to the was it the quarterfinals or is it the? Well, I mean that was just that was not the, the first round. It was that the, the play in games. But I mean, at least you got it to the Odex, especially with like having your coach quitting the month before and then getting a new, new coach. I guess. I mean, I, I guess there's that. I mean, they've. I don't know how many years. I don't know how many years it's been since they've won a playoff game now, but it. I just remember it was in my freshman year, they were really good. Yeah. And then they got to the playoffs and they got upset at home. Last year they got upset at home, so I mean. Well, I can't I can't say anything because I'm a freshman, but like, <laughs> going moving on to women's the women's basketball team. There. Wait. And we also want to say was it um, Chandler to end their careers. Chandler Murray and Davion Greer were named to the All Odak teams. Uh, Murray was named to the second, Greer to the third. So congratulations to them on these awards and on great careers. We look, we wish them the best mm-hmm. moving on. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. All right, now moving on to the women's basketball. Uh, they, I believe, they play Saturday in the quarterfinals. They play tomorrow night. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. They play. They're playing as the home team oh, against yeah, yeah, Roanoke, yeah. but the game's being held in Salem. Okay, man, I'm just like off on the dates right now. Yeah. Well. But, yeah. yeah. Nope. So, so this women's game is tomorrow. Uh, they face Roanoke and Salem, like you said. Uh, I think it's a Healy Moon Mooney named to Aaliyah Moon. Aaliyah Moon. Man, I can't pronounce anything today. Aaliyah Moon named to first All Odak, along with Madison Baum, named Co Defensive Player of the Year and third team All Odak. Yeah, it's been crazy to watch these girls. I mean, they started. I think was. 0-6 or 0-8? It was 0-7, I believe. Uh, let me pull it up right here. Because, yeah, they were... Um, oh, yeah, they were 0-6 to begin the season. And then they just started... Win- they went on a 10-game winning mm-hmm. streak. I mean, they just came out of nowhere. And that, that yeah, grit, that fierceness played w- very well for them. Unfortunately, they started to struggle. They lost three of their last four games, so they weren't able to get the number one seed, even though they were in first place. Well, they, they got the bye. Yeah. So and they, that's a big deal. So mm-hmm, they finished mm-hmm. the season fourteen and eleven. Um, they're going to be the three seed. They're going to face Roanoke tomorrow at eight o'clock. So we're wishing the best for them. Mm-hmm. And for those of you who want to go, Bridgewater is holding. They're going to have a fan bus. So if you want to go there, there are twenty five available seats. Um, if you want to sign up, there. You got to go to the athletic administration suite with athletic administrative assistant Virginia Fulginity. So I I would hurry on to do that. But the bus boards at five o'clock tomorrow in front of um, Nininger Hall, and they leave at five thirty. So if you want to go, I encourage you to go support this team. Has been fun to watch. We're looking yeah. forward. Hopefully, they can snag that ODAC title. Yeah, but what I'm seeing, they have a really really good chance of snagging the ODAC title. Yeah, so. I think because I mean. 
I think these days off have been good for them because mm-hmm. they've just they probably just tired themselves out. I oh mean, yeah. They'd won, they were going nonstop. They won ten games in a row. I mean, they even before then they had won. Was it um. Thirteen of their last fifteen. Oh yeah. So I mean, yeah, it was probably good for them to get some rest. Uh, we're hoping that that's going to help them recover yep. and that they'll be ready to go wishing, take on Roanoke. Tomorrow. Wishing the best of luck to them tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so moving on to baseball. So baseball season for Bridgewater has kicked off last week, or I guess it was two weekends ago. Yeah, it kicked off last week. I mean, last weekend they had, I think they had two double headers. Yeah, which they went four and zero. I guess. I'm they pretty went, sure. Well, they had two. They lost um, last week, but this past weekend they went four and zero in two double headers back to back, which is insane. I that that's just a lot of playing. That's a lot of innings, oh, yeah. and I that's insane that you won all of them in one weekend. They scored twenty seven runs this past weekend. They had played Messiah on Saturday. They won the first game five to three, and the second seven to two. Uh, uh, they, they beat the sales mm-hmm. eight to five and seven to four on Sunday. And their record right now is uh, six and one, which is a pretty good start yeah. to the season. And they're undefeated at home, so I mean they're just playing really well. They only le- they're doing well. They're bringing runners in. They only left five runners on base on um, Saturday on Sunday in the last game. That's mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. they and I mean the sales had three errors, which I mean isn't isn't the end of the world, but you're yeah. not gonna win doing that. Especially when Bridgewater's bringing in seven runs. I mean, dang. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, so was it... Um, they only had eight strike. It's crazy. They only had eight strikeouts in that game. In the game or, like, the entire weekend? Oh, and I'm talking about the last game that they won to, like, sweep the doubleheader. <sighs> but, yeah, they had eight strikeouts, so they're doing well. They're... The sales is hitting balls. Oh, yeah. But they're just fielding them, so their defense is really what's helping them win right oh, now yeah. in addition to their offense. So it's looking like this is going to be a pretty tough team. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you can't really have – you can have a great offense, but if you don't have a defense, you can't win games. Yeah, also awesome. – Cal Ripken always said it the best. Offense wins games, defense wins championships. True. Moving on to uh, softball. They've which been doing pretty good, too. They've been pretty – so they've only lost one, so they're 3-1 and one right now. But – um yeah, they have ten games coming up in I said in Florida over the spring break. Yeah, they've yeah they've got ten games in Florida over spring break. I mean, so far they mercy I think was it they they mercy ruled two teams. I think was it a five innings and six innings games. They won their first game ten to nothing. Oh, that's and then nine to one over Penn Altoona. They, they lost one game that was five to one. Mm-hmm. So they've got. They've scored thirty three runs in four games, so they. That's. I mean, the baseball crazy. team's doing well, but oh yeah, they're they're, they're like swinging off, the bats really oh, well. Starting off well. I mean, like that, and that's what Mary Washington had to do. Like, as long as they're hitting well, they're going to be winning games. Oh yeah. So I mean, I remember last year I went to the game, one of their games, and they were just hitting on all cylinders. So I think offensive power is going to be their key this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean they can't. Ha- I mean, once you get into conference games, you're not going to be able to have those five to one games like that. That's true, but like, it's a good, it's a good. But I mean, conf- they had two double headers too. That's true. It's a good confidence booster to just to start off the season like yeah. that, especially going going forward. It's going to be a long season, but it's going to be a long next week. All- they got ten games, <sighs> so we wish them the best. We hope they have fun in Florida because mm-hmm. I'm sure they're going to be doing other things while they're there. Well, it's going to be a lot nicer in Florida, so yeah. That's I wish I was there for spring break, <laughs> but yeah. So we wish them the best of luck next week at spring break. Hopefully they can bring home 10 wins. So speaking of baseball, uh, we're going to head over to MLB as, like, starting February 21st, uh, spring training games have started. Yeah. And they've been going pretty well. I've seen most of the teams that made trade acquisitions and, like, free agent signings have been doing pretty, pretty well, pretty decent. Especially the Yankees, I believe the t- today they won eight to two against the Nationals. I don't know if Garrett Cole started, but yeah. players like Garrett Cole starting for the Yankees. Anthony Rendon got traded to the Angels. Mookie Betts and David Price got traded to the Dodgers, as well as countless others starting at new teams. And so this is where they debut. Yeah, and one yeah one of those player. I mean, one player that stayed put is Tim Tebow. I mean, he's actually he's playing in the like the bigs. Now for oh, the yeah, minor leagues, right. I mean, or at least for spring training. Yesterday, he hit a home run for the Mets in their game. I think it was against the um, the Tigers. So yeah, he's that's crazy. Doing well, and also for Tim Tebow, he's going to be playing 
for the Philippines in the World Baseball Classic qualifying rounds. Now, what what can what can't this guy do? Yeah, I mean it's ama- I mean it's amazing, and I mean obviously he's he only hitting two twenty three, but I mean considering that he hadn't played since high school, and he was yeah. he hit four ninety four in high school. So I mean, this is not some guy who's yeah. like oh he's like kind of okay. It's like this guy well, probably could have like, gone pro, kind of like Michael Jordan a little bit. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't put Tim Tebow and Michael Jordan in the same sense necessarily. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, so yeah, the reason why he's able to play for the Philippines is he was born that I mean, he's American, but he was born in the Philippines yeah. because his parents lived there as missionaries. Uh, they only moved to the U.S. when he was three years old, so he's able to play for them as that part of it. And he hopefully they'll be able to. We'll see if they can qualify for the um, World Baseball Classic next year. They're gonna be they were gonna kick off. Mm-hmm. Um, they play the Chez Republic. Shevek- Czech Republic? The Czech Republic on March 20th mm-hmm. in Tucson, Arizona. It's beautiful what baseball weather out there oh, at yeah. this time of year. 100%. So, yeah. I just love seeing Tim Tebow just succeed, especially like I mean, since done, he took off. He's done so much. He's done um, commercials. He's done football, baseball, and he's a pretty good commentator on ESPN. Oh, yeah. I love listening to him. Yeah, so I, I can't wait to see him to to see him succeed in the future, especially like with the MLB, but also in and then with the Philippines and the World Baseball Classic, hopefully they can make it to the qualifying yeah. rounds. And so next, one of our bigger topics, we're talking about NFL. Uh, the 2020 Combine starts tomorrow. I These are where all the big draft prospects are, like, they show off who they're going to be, what they can offer to teams. And some prospects who know they're going to get drafted high, like yeah. Chase Young. Joe Burrow. I mean, who who do you have going first there? You know, I think Joe Burrow's going to go first no matter what, but I don't I don't know if the Bengals are going to get him because they could trade him away. The Dolphins could trade up to number 1. You don't know. I mean, yeah, that's the thing when you get that's the thing about the draft that's crazy. I mean, you get teams that are the same teams in the like the top 10 draft picks every yeah. year. They're always like the problem is they've got f- f- bad fr- front offices. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. Yeah. So I mean, You're it's right. kind of like you look at okay, they can get these players, but who knows? Well, speaking, how can you say they're not going to do something to screw it up? Well, speaking of bad front offices, like before before the season even started, like 2019 season, the Redskins were a terrible front office. I'm a Redskins fan. They're terrible front office, but they kind of they it was a clean sweep. They fired most of their staff. They hired Ron Rivera, and he hired most of his staff from the Panthers. And in an interview, I believe it was either today or yesterday, uh, he they interviewed Tua and they interviewed Joe Burrow, and he said it's not out, out of the question that they could take another QB because like anything's on the table. Dang, I mean they got Tua's up there too. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean this draft is going to be interesting because it's not. There's so many possibilities, so many different things that could happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I mean, who's going to get better? I mean, yeah. Because, yep. I mean, especially with, what is it, all the controversy. I mean, has has Tom Brady been pick, picked up yet? No. Well, so free agency doesn't start until March 15th. Yeah, so we got some quarterbacks so, with free agent like issues. middle of March. Of, Philip Rivers isn't coming back to San yeah, Diego, there, so look for them to do something. There are a ton of QBs that are going on the free agent block, so we'll see what happens. So moving on, is we're still in the football realm. Moving on to XFL, which I don't know, I don't know if previous broadcasts have like we hit the once. XFL just a little bit, but on Saturday, the so Saturday, February twenty second, uh, the third week of the XFL debuted, not debut, but. The Houston Roughnecks won against the Tampa Bay Vipers, thirty-four to twenty-seven. Dallas Renegades won against the Seattle Dragons, twenty-four to twelve. And on Sunday, the New York Guardians lost to the St. Louis BattleHawks, twenty-nine to nine. And then the Los Angeles Wildcats pretty much swept the DC Defenders, thirty-nine to nine, which is insane because they have been going like they DC Defenders have been winning. They won two to nothing, but in outstanding fashion. Yeah, I mean, I think it's crazy because Los Angeles, the Wildcats made headlines when they fired their, um, was it their defensive coordinator, Pepper Johnson, yep. after the first game. I mean, well, I mean, I look like, it looks like it might not have been such a bad decision. No, because going into the game, the defenders were pretty much slated to, like, sweep them. But 
I think we are out of time. We are. So, all right, I'm Dean Barker. And I'm Zach Rogers. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you. Uh, we actually won't see you next week. So have a nice spring break yep. and go Eagles. Go Eagles. I'm not sure about you guys, but I have to root for the home team and the D.C. defenders. A bit of a struggle during week three for sure, but they're going to pull it back together and get back on track next week here in the XFL. For more on sports, please be sure to check out Student Podcast Beyond the Blitz, which is now on Twitter, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts for the NFL. Jay and Shay's Sports for Dummies on our website here at bcvoice.org for a wide array of a lot of sports nationally. And Daily Life, which focuses more on Bridgewater sports through the eyes of an athlete, also here on bcvoice.org. For those just tuning in, you're listening to the Midweek Radio Show on bcvoice.org. And up next for our entertainment segment is Ayande Roberts and Isaac Miller with Sipe Center updates, video game news, and updates on cinema. And of course, your weekly dosage of music updates. Good afternoon, evening. My name is Ian Day once again. My name is Isaac. And we got some entertainment news to go ahead and talk about. First things first, let's talk about the Sype Center and some new things that are happening this weekend. So their Sype Center is showing the movie Knives Out, starring Daniel Craig and Chris Evans. You, there will be showings on Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. And of course, if you're a Bridgewater student, you know the movie showings at the Sype Center are free. This is a great thing to take advantage of. And then Saturday in the Sipe Center, they're hosting the Mutts Gone Nuts comedy show, which will feature dogs doing acts such as catching frisbees. There's even supposed to be a talking dog, according to the ads. Okay, now I, that, okay, now, I ha- now you have to see that. Like, you hear the words talking and dogs, like, all right, you're so, I'm, like, you, you're, that's crazy. I'm in. That's a talking dog. You, Right. So on Saturday, there are going to be two showings of this. It'll be a showing at 3 p.m. and a show at 7 p.m. So go ahead and check it out if you're still on, if you're in the area. And now we're going to get into some of the more, some bigger news. So we're talk, talking about movie news. Star Wars. Everyone knows it. Some of us like it. Some of us don't. Reportedly, there's a new Star Wars film in the works directed by the J.D. Dillard, who has done the movie Slight. Um... This is reportedly taking place on Exegol, which was the planet in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. It's very interesting that they're still moving forward with this in new Star Wars movies, especially with the Obi-Wan series still being put to the shelf. I don't know if this is going to be a good look for Kathleen Kennedy and the rest of Disney, but uh, I mean, who knows? Well, it's Star Wars, and if there's one thing Star Wars has proven in its 30 or more years of existing, it'll sell tickets. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And speaking of directors, we have a confirmation that Eli Roth is in talks to direct the Borderlands movie. And reports are also saying that production is going to be starting sometime next year. It's going to be really interesting. Eli Roth is a very violent and risque director, which kind of fits Borderlands when you really think about it. Oh, it's absolutely perfect for a game like Borderlands. That's something that kind of built itself on the almost cartoonish nature of the violence within it. So... Having a director like Eli Roth, who's experienced in that, should have really helped bring the character of the game into the movie. Yeah, absolutely. And another story, Ben Affleck breaking his silence for the first time, talking about his exiting his role as Batman. And with Robert Pattinson, be new footage and new images coming up as the Dark Knight, and his cowl and the cape and everything. Affleck broke his silence is why he left. And according to him, it's because of, it was a lot about his personal life and he was becoming, he was becoming a drunkard and it was, his marriage was falling apart. And so he had to exit the role for his own personal reasons. And I mean, I mean I'm here to say like, you know, Ben Affleck, you, you did well for what you were given. You were great in Batman versus Superman justice league you were still good. It just your script. It's the script that didn't really do you any favors. I don't blame you. You were a great Batman. I would love to see more of him, but I mean, I, at least he's taking care of himself. And at, at this, and that point, like that's all that matters. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, kind of reading through some of that interview, it was he was really he was in dire straits, and it was to a point where he really had to choose between kind of getting his life back together or continuing on with these movies. And at the end of the day, making sure you're safe and sound is way more important than any Batman movie ever will be. All right, and then we got Harvey Weinstein. We all know the controversy surrounding him. I don't think I have to explain it. 
uh, we have had a conviction. Harvey Weinstein has been convicted for third degree rape charges and has a first degree criminal sex act charge. All other charges were dropped, however. Yeah. Now, these two charges, they still, he will face a penalty of up to 29 years in prison. And given especially some of the photos we've seen of Harvey Weinstein coming in and out of court uh, as his trial has gone on, he's not look. He's looking pretty worse for the wear. So yeah, I think the this scandal really did take a toll on him. And like, why it's probably. I mean, I hate to. I don't like wishing ill will on people, but what he is, what he did was despicable. Was absolutely. was absolutely disgusting, and he deserves to. He deserves to see justice. Like these women need justice. Uh huh. And he actually, um, he's facing another trial too. He still has uh, more charges pending against him in Los Angeles that he'll yes, have to face. I, so his time in the spotlight for these horrible reasons is not done yet. Yeah. So now we're going to move on to some video game news. Um, but before we get to video game news, I forgot to mention this. I'm going to mention this very briefly. Bob Iger, former CEO of the Walt Disney Company, has now stepped down as of yesterday. And f former Disney Parks chairman Bob Chappick will be taking over effective immediately. Broke absolutely. Broke yes, broke, story broke yesterday. Came out of nowhere. Everybody was shocked. I was, I was looking at Twitter and every, people were just like, what's happening? What's this going to mean for Disney? Who knows? Yeah, it's and you know, going short term future at least the outlook for Disney, he will he's going to remain in uh, the position of being the creative director as for what Disney produces for the next year, yes. as um, Mr. Chappick waits to take over. So right. there still will be a transition period, but yeah, this is just out of the blue. Yeah, good on him for going out on top though. Like most people will wait until like they hit rock bottom, but no, go out on top. You you have one of two of the most successful franchises under your belt. Why not? Oh, certainly, especially with putting Disney Plus out. Disney's as strong as it's arguably ever been now. Right. So now, now we're going to move on to video game news. First things first was that originally there was going to be a playable demo of the long-anticipated Last of Us Part Two at PAX East. However, it, we have an update where Sony has canceled its presence at PAX East due to the coronavirus, so there will no longer be a demo for The Last of Us Part Two. Although the mayor of Boston has apparently urged a company to show up at PAX East, which I don't know if they'll take it because of that, because of those issues. No, this is uh, this is definitely something that's kind of scaring a lot of people off from PAX, um, because Sony isn't even the only company to pull out. Uh, Capcom did it. CD Projekt Red also pulled out. PUBG Corp pulled out. Square Enix they all pulled out. Yeah, and that's and that's honestly a little bit shocking because you have Square Enix is coming out with you know Final Fantasy VII is it coming down the pipeline in April. Right. This is this was their biggest chance to get a huge press run of hype for that game. Well, I mean, the game's already it's this is a long awaited remake. Like out of all the remakes in the world that like, could have been made, like everyone was waiting for a Final Fantasy Seven remake. That's so true. I don't I don't really see like it, it needed the exposure at PAX East, but it would have def that's definitely helped. Capcom and C especially C D Project Red with Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven coming out in September. This is the game that we that should that needed the boost from PAX East. Oh, absolutely. Speaking of CD Project, uh, CD Project Red and Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, they have confirmed releases for the PlayStation five and Xbox Series X. So if you guys are thinking about buying those consoles, you will you will be able to play Cyberpunk on the new consoles. And also Fortnite news: season two, chapter two has been revealed, and they're including as a battle pass skin none other than the Merc with the Mouth himself, Deadpool. That's going to be interesting, getting all the comic book fans into Fortnite. You still won't get me to play that game. Amen. <laughs> I can't. I, I, I'm i sorry, you guys who love Fortnite. I, I like playing good games. Um, ooh. <laughs> oh, that ooh. hurt a little bit. Ooh. And just really briefly, we're going to touch on some game previews. Uh, there's a couple of really big, pro high-profile games coming out this March. Two most important ones, really, is Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing New Horizons, both coming out March 20th. And the week prior to that, you also have Neo 2, which is a sequel, and you also have My Hero 1 Justice 2 for all of the anime fans. I'm definitely excited to see Doom Eternal. Oh, Doom's going to be so good. <laughs> I'm so excited for Doom. All right, yeah, so moving on into some music news now. Uh, Jay-Z and the philanthropic arm of his Rock Nation label, Team Rock, are suing the Mississippi Department of Corrections on behalf of over 150 prisoners at the Mississippi State Penitentiary in Parchman, Mississippi. 
Uh, this suit alleges that food there was adulterated with rat feces, cockroaches, rocks, and bird droppings, and that multiple prisoners in the facility have untreated medical conditions such as cancer and lupus. That's the that's legitimately awful. Who, like you, ha you have to ask, like who was res like who who was in charge of this, and why did they not they why did they not catch any of this? And if this was deliberate, like these people need to be out of this like out of this position. Regard, like I don't care. Like that's awful. Why would you even though they're prisoners, they are humans as well. Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why uh, Jay Z and the. Uh, Team Rock, they're seeking to have the um, Department of Justice take over the facility until they are able to improve conditions there, and then the Department of Corrections can take over. Now, this isn't even the first suit that Jay-Z has filed uh, against the Mississippi Department of Corrections this year. He actually also filed one um, on behalf of 28 prisoners in the same prison earlier in January, and that was in response to five deaths during riots over Ooh. the new year there. I'm, you know, kudos to Jay Z taking it, taking the stand, taking this initiative. Like I know a lot of uh, artists, especially hip hop artists, they are very like pro African American. They are pro minority, but it's very, very. It says a lot about your character when you're willing to stand up for against a, a state institution, like a like the like the Mississippi this pen, this Department of Corrections and like this. Oh, absolutely. It's it really says a lot about your character and what you what you want to get out for, like what kind of person that you are. Yeah, absolutely. I think something something that Jay Z's kind of gone out of his way to show, especially like in the last decade, as he's kind of come into the later part of his career as a musician and become more into the mold of a businessman, is that he wants to give back to the communities where he's from. And you know, especially unfortunately, he is not from Mississippi. He's obviously from New York, but these are still disenfranchised people who are put into these terrible situations that they have no control over because unfortunately they're just part of the prison population there right. you know so if the prison's understaffed <clears throat> underfunded well that's too tough for them i guess but glad to see some hopefully some movement on this issue so one more piece of uh, music news for you tonight streaming uh has been on the rise obviously the last decade really in music and now um in the year 2019 streaming accounted for 79 and a half percent of all music revenue in 2019 which set a new high now just to put in perspective how much that really is for the industry the revenue from streaming which totaled 8.8 .8 billion dollars was more than what the entire industry made just two years ago in 2017 that's a lot of money like <laughs> that is, and that's let's it that's Eight billion with a B, mind you. Like that's a ton of money. And but, I mean, we saw this coming. Like I, I, this was a foregone conclusion, right? Oh, absolutely. Like with streaming, streaming is just taking over not just music, but just every every aspect of entertainment. And so it makes so much. It makes more sense that streaming is going to be sort of be keep in making up more of the industry, like of the revenue for the industry, because. That's going to be a, the story for a lot of other uh, aspects of entertainment. Oh, absolutely. And I think especially for our generation, that's something that we're really going to be primed to take advantage of as we kind of grow into the age where we're strategizing industries like this in the future. Because I don't know about you, but after I was 10 years old, I don't think I ever bought an, an actual physical CD of an album. I just streamed it online. Right. So I think the last one that I bought was... Wow, it's been a long time, but it was a it was a it was a the hits of Michael Jackson. That was the last one that I that I bought, and I didn't even really buy that. But it was my mom bought it, but it was kind of like it was like me and hers. So. Yeah, it ended up becoming yours. So yeah, yeah, and that was the last album that we ever bought, like straight up. Mm -hmm. Is but yes, yeah, because we have streaming now, right? And something you even think about too, because you mentioned that was the greatest hits album. That's not even something that's hardly necessary anymore with streaming, because. Right. The entire discography is already there. And I just want to add really quickly, No Time to Die, the new Billie Eilish single, has released for the for Carrie Joji Fukunawa's No Time to Die, the new James Bond film. Um, 36 million views right now on YouTube. It's a pretty decent song. Um, I don't think it's anywhere close to as good as Skyfall. I also don't like it as much as Writings on the Wall. But hey, I'm excited. I'm excited for the movie. movie comes out at the beginning of April, so... Check out the song and check out the movie when it comes out in April. 
Sure. That would be great. Yeah, yeah, I hope it is. But we're running. We have run out of time. Wow, it feels like time has not passed at all. But thank you guys so much for having us for your entertainment. You guys have a great spring break. Real quick with a friendly non-spoiler midweek movie review, I have Sonic the Hedgehog. I rated it a solid 6 out of 10. It did what it wanted to do, it was fun, silly, and it gave Sonic fans a lot of what they wanted. I just cannot rank it any higher just simply because it was a kid's movie and it very much reminded me of that many times throughout the film. Before we move on, we want to remind you that you are listening to the BC Voice Midweek Radio Show here on bcvoice.org. To wrap up tonight's show, we have our favorite segment, Squat Talk, where students Justin Rogers and Holden Andrews talk about a new unique topic each week. It only seems fitting that right before spring break, they discuss different vacation destinations. We would like to hear what your favorite vacation destination is. Let us know in the BC Voice Instagram Messenger. Without any ado, take it away, fellas. Hello, hello, hello. This is Squawk Talk yet again with me, Justin. And your boy, Holden. And we are here, two wacky and crazy guys, talking about some wacky and crazy things. And so one of the many wacky things that we talk about here is going to be vacation destinations and spring break activities. So first thing we're going to talk about, Holden, what are you going to be doing for spring break? Spring break, uh, I'm spending a lot of it with my girlfriend, my family, you know, just really hanging out. I've been saying for the past probably month and a half how much I need this break just to just to get away from school and, you know, I mean, I obviously still have studies and things to do, but just to have a, just time to relax with the people that I care about, it's just going to be so great. Um, I don't normally talk about my birthday, but I am turning 21 over, hey. over break, you know, it's always nice to have, you know, a birthday away from school, I think. But, um, That's awesome. 7th, so. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, what about you, Justin? What are you doing? Uh, there's a couple of plans that I have. Mostly it's just going to be hanging around the house, chilling with the family. But um, let's see, what am I doing? I mean, we have one day where we're planning on going to West Virginia. My uncle has some property there, so we're probably going to spend the day there, spend the night, um, chill with my cousins, which is awesome because I love my cousins. Mm-hmm. They literally mm-hmm. live like 30 minutes away from us. So anytime we get to see them is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then just a couple other plans that are up in the air. A lot of people that don't usually get to see trying to get like mm. some dinner dates and nice, stuff like that together. Nice. So, you know, the usual stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I think now we should get into, hop into some vacation destinations. Ooh, let's, let's go. Let's do it. Uh, I need a vacation. I need some naps. <sighs> honestly, honestly. All right. So what's your, what's your typical vacation? Like, you know, do y'all, do you, do you as a family go on vacation every year? What's the, so what's every- the plan? Every year, my family goes on vacation for a while. We did this for a while, and then we stopped, and we started doing it again. Mm-hmm. We go to the Outer Banks okay, and North Carolina. Specifically, we go to Duck. If you've never been yeah. to Duck, it's a yeah. little like corner edge of the Outer Banks. And we usually try to get like a little beach house mm-hmm. like 10 minutes away from the beach. Um, and so we can like walk to the beach and then nice. like have a bunch of stores around. We'll have a day where we go out shopping. A lot of days we go to the beach. Um, we had one year, one of my favorite things to do is to go on the beach and collect seashells. Okay. So one yeah, year yeah. after the, unfortunately, after the hurricane that happened in North Carolina, a lot of seashells came in. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was able to get a lot of um, seashells and one of my best seashell collections I had in forever. So um, so that's a whole lot of fun. And then we've had years before where we weren't able, just because of like um, financial situations and stuff, mm-hmm. not able to afford uh beach house so we go camping nice in the same area okay. so we've done that before we've also gone to the mountains a couple of times we mm-hmm. had um someone who has a cabin so we were able to you know just stay in it for free for a mm-hmm. week um and just you know on like a campground kind of place so, nice yeah. nice all yeah. right how about you what's your favorite vacation destinations oh. or places that you've gone to before wow uh you know every every year you know my family tries to get to the beach for a week and yeah. uh you know that's always nice just I think one of my favorite places is just sitting on the beach. We go to we go to Virginia Beach. Just yes. sitting there, you know, with a I book lived, in your hands. I lived in Virginia Beach for about four Did years, you? three or four years. Okay, yeah. okay, nice. Yeah, but um, you know, having two younger sisters like I do, we don't really go. I've actually never been camping. You know, I've done I've done it where you know you get an RV and you know you drive to a campsite and you yeah. sleep in that. But I never like slept in a tent or anything like that. But we don't really do like you know trips where there's a lot of walking or anything like that just because my sisters are so little yeah um but you know when i was younger we went to um new york city you know my um 
my dad, my grandpa are big Yankees fans, and I am too. And oh, uh, so we got to see a game at the old Yankee Stadium, and just you know, it's it was it was just a great trip. I think I was in the third grade. Wow. Yeah, so it was just a great time to go. Great, just you know, great season, all that good stuff. So that's awesome. But yeah. Um. So getting, I guess, going deeper into this, what's been your favorite vacation? Dang, favorite vacation. Um. I'd say, I mean, my favorite vacations are always going to the Outer Banks. I mean, mm-hmm. I talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, one of my favorite ones where we, it was a really big one, um, but we had my immediate family, so me, my parents, my brother, my sister, mm-hmm. and then also my cousins, and then my and then my uncle, my aunt, and then our grandparents. Yeah. So we had we so we all rented a big house and we uh-huh, all got to uh-huh. spend time together, which is I always love spending time with my cousins. Um, no matter how annoying they can get, it's always <laughs> good to spend time with them because like even though we live like half an hour away from them, like me being at school, I never get to see them mm. at all. So it's always good, um, hanging out with them. Uh, and we just and had one time where my, um grandpa his birthday was during that week so we mm. all like took him out to dinner kind of thing Aww, so so that kind of cute. stuff i yeah. love that stuff and yeah. there was so this past year though it was really cool we got to um see um uh, watch the stars at night it was a clear uh-huh. night and and the outer banks it's not like dc which is where i'm from i'm from mm. the dc area northern virginia hashtag nova <laughs> all the way uh but like you never get to see that often i mean bridgewater here like if you have a chance take one night where it's nice Mm -hmm. and where the sky is clear and watch the stars here because the stars in bridgewater are fantastic Mm -hmm. um but there we got i think as a whole we might have seen like 15 to 20 shooting stars it was so great Mm -hmm. um so moments like that are um my favorite but what was one of your favorite vacations you've had wow you know my mom is a huge uh fan of all things disney and um i think it was uh so last december um, you know, during Christmas break, uh, it was my two little sisters' first time going to Disney World, <laughs> and you know, I'm kind of at the age where I'm in that in between phase where you know you can you like to do some things, but there are other things you can't do because you know, you're not 21 and things like that. Yeah. But um, you know, just being able to see you know the excitement and the the wonder and just every they were my two little sisters were just so in awe of everything that was going on there. Yeah. You know, you know it was, it was nice kind of just getting to experience everything again because I hadn't been since I was you know probably second grade maybe so you know kind of getting even doing little things like meeting the characters again you know that was fun just because you know i was there with my little sisters and my parents and it was just it was just a great time that's awesome um but yeah but um let's see you know i think before before we came in here we were kind of talking about cruises and i think we both had kind of similar experiences with those so why don't you talk about your the cruise you went on all right so the cruise i went on was with carnival cruise we went to jamaica that was the main so jamaica caribbean Mm -hmm. um caribbean however you want to say it um it was cool the reason we went was so i graduated high school my Mm -hmm. sister graduated college my brother turned 16 and my parents have their 25th wedding anniversary. Oh. So it was all of that in one. And they it was funny because at Christmas they had like this big box uh-huh. and we opened it and it said, you're going on a cruise this summer. So that, that was really cool yeah. just to have that because like a cruise is a really big deal because mm-hmm. it's super expensive. Mm-hmm. And um, so that was cool for my parents to do. But to be completely honest with you, I worked at a summer camp that summer and like every week is just like, it's so much fun, but it's just... A lot of work and you mm-hmm. get super tired so when i was going on a cruise i was just expecting like okay i'm gonna relax for a week and i'm gonna come back well rested yeah. it was not that <laughs> uh it, because there's just a lot of activities on board mm-hmm. so you want to do almost everything as much as possible so me my brother my sister and just my entire family we try to do as much as possible mm-hmm. Um, we went on like in the water park for a little bit. Even me and my brother even played shuffleboard a couple yeah. of times. They had um, uh, mini golf and they had bingo. So they uh-huh. had like a little bit of everything. So we did have times where we took naps and stuff, but it kind of like wasn't the same mm-hmm. as like just like taking a nap like for three or four hours kind of thing. So it like really tired me out. Yeah. And so going back to camp, I was just like, I'm still really tired. Give me one more week <laughs> just to rest, please. So that was my experience with it. But I would definitely encourage, if you haven't been able to experience a cruise, I would definitely do it. Uh, for me, it's just like every 15 years. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would do one every 10 or 15 years because like yeah. can't do it back-to-back years, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think, you know, my, my situation was kind of similar. You know, we went when Ashlyn and I graduated high school, and it was my grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so they Isn't got to come awesome with how it. that works out? I know, I know. Just the timing of everything is so interesting. Right. But um, we actually did a Disney cruise to Alaska. And... 
So I know what you're thinking, you know, Alaska, you know, that's not really bathing suit weather. But that just sounds fan like at least the mm -hmm. view wise, the view, it sounds fantastic. The view was amazing. And the one cool thing was like, you know, instead of a bunch of pools, there were more it was, you know, there was a there was a pool, but there were also a lot more hot tubs. Yeah. So it was it was nice to just, you know, hop in one of those, especially cuz like the steam was coming off cuz the air was colder and everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the views were just amazing and um it was interesting because like the dynamic of the cruise was it was again interesting because you know you had it was really geared towards younger kids but they had all these activities older kids could do too right. so like Ashlyn and I we got to um there were like excursions and I know you talked about one before yeah um, so I'll let you get into that in a second but we got to um kayak on the Pacific Ocean that is cool yeah and we saw whales and it was just it was so just picturesque and amazing and you know um we were just talking about my LinkedIn profile the picture on there yeah that was the like that was from on the off of the Pacific that is so cool. If you want to see that picture, my LinkedIn, M. Holden Andrews. So, <laughs> shameless plug right there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, you know, I, you were talking about a little excursion you did on your cruise. Yeah, so there's actually two things that we did. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, so there's one thing. We were going to do two. So we had the choice between either zip lining, mm -hmm. which would have been so much fun, but me and my brother were working at a... No, I was working at a summer camp that summer, and we already had a zip line, and I was right. like, no, I don't want to do you that. you got to do something different. Yeah. So, but it would have been like very, so much higher than the one we had in, at Watermark's camp. Mm -hmm. But what we did do is we were able to climb a waterfall in Jamaica. Wow. And oh my gosh, it wasn't, so it wasn't like a typical waterfall you would think of like, you know, 180 degrees, mm -hmm. like going up kind of thing. It was more of like a slant and we got to climb up a lot of rocks. We mm -hmm. had to have special water shoes on and everything so it was really fun just to like climb up that and kind of yeah. have those excursions because i'm the kind of guy like when i go on a hike or something i want to pick like the path that like nobody goes on right, like, up right, the rocks right. and like go around and everything and so like when me and my sister go on hikes like she always wants to get like the really good picture because mm -hmm. she loves photography so i'm like okay i'll go up the rock <laughs> for you i don't care if i possibly fall to my doom so, like, I like stuff like that. So that was probably the coolest part of the mm -hmm. cruise that I went on. For those of you who don't know Justin, I have seen this man not wear a hat <laughs> one time. So I, I have one question. Yes. While you were climbing the waterfall, mm. were you wearing a hat? I was not wearing a hat. Whoa. During that. <laughs> and, yes, we have our very great host, Brandon Wells, holding up his hands in... Uh, happiness um, because <laughs> I was not wearing a hat and that's one of the things I'm not looking forward to when I uh, get a professional job is I can't wear a hat anymore I mean may maybe you can I maybe. mean I mean, no you know maybe you know um, hashtag uh, shameless plug beyond the blitz uh, our podcast that me and Brandon has goes on and it'll be forever great and I'll just wear my hat for the rest of my days <laughs> So, bringing this back to spring break, what is one thing you're going to make sure you get done over break? You know, are you, is there sleep? It's a sleep. Uh, <laughs> That's like the f first thing that comes to mind. And then also, like, I mean, as a senior, just trying to apply for jobs. Yeah. Because, like, it's so hard to do that when you have, like, assignment after assignment. Mm -hmm. Or, like, when you don't have assignments, all you want to do is not do anything. Yeah. And just because you're so busy. So, I think that, and then just, like, for me, just personally, just spiritually resting. Mm -hmm. Just getting ready for the last month of school, yeah. um, especially a month and a half, right before graduation, too. Just kind of spiritually preparing myself for what this next couple of months mm -hmm. may look like. But, so what are some things that you're going to be either looking forward to or make sure you get done? Well, break? as always, I have a book list that I keep adding to, but never, keep, never get short. Oh my gosh. Uh, I it... think over break I've got The Institute by Stephen King. Okay. So, yeah. Isn't it funny how like at least when I like either go to thrift stores or bookstores or something, I already have like 20 books I haven't read, mm -hmm. but I still buy 10. Yep. And it's just like the book yep. list gets longer and longer and the m number of books that you read gets shorter and mm -hmm. shorter and shorter. And uh, the other thing I'm making sure that I do, Top Chef starts soon, I believe. Mm, I want to say I want to say the 7th might be a different day, but whenever Top Chef starts, gotta start it. That's I always watch it with my mom. It's one of nice. our favorite things to do. Is just you know because 
I don't know. And, you know, when yeah. as I'm living in an apartment next year, I'm going to have to cook. So yeah. might as well learn Ooh. somehow. <laughs> Two more things I definitely want to do. Call of the Wild just came out, a new movie yeah. um, with Harrison Ford. I read the book when I was in high mm-hmm. school, and I mm-hmm. love the book, so I want to watch the movie. And we have $5 movie Tuesdays at, okay, okay. at home. So I'm going to do that. Number two is I'm going to binge um, watch Clone Wars as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Star Wars Clone yep. Wars. So I can yep. get all the way up to the seventh season, hopefully. So, you know, do a couple of those things, kind of just numb the mind a little bit from school and then kind of get back on track but yeah yeah well it's eight o'clock looks like we are out of time uh, again for squawk talk out of time all right well thank you to all you listeners out there i hope you all have a great spring break get well rested get yes. well read do whatever you need to do to get ready for the end of fi- uh, the end of school yes so with that i'm holding andrews and justin rogers thank you good night good night Quick apology for that technical difficulty at the beginning as I did not unmute Holden's mic. However, for my favorite vacation destination, it has to be the beach. I love the quote-unquote salt life. Just something about it makes me feel it's in. Well, the end of Squat Talk also marks the end of tonight's show. We want to thank all of our listeners, especially those who stuck with us the whole hour. We will be back after spring break on Wednesday, March 11th at 7 p.m. for our next show. My name is Brandon Wells, and you have been listening to the BC Voice Midweek Radio Show. For more from our broadcast team, please be sure to check out the many different podcasts also on our website, and apparently also Holden's LinkedIn account. I will end tonight's show with a shout-out to TJ Covington from our music department for making our brand-new, beautiful midweek music. (laughs) 